Welcome back for another video tutorial courtesy of MrHanson.net. Today we're going to focus in on factoring and how it's going to help us solve equations. Here's an equation. We have a squared plus 13a plus 36 equals 0. So anytime you see an equation, you're thinking about how the left side must equal the right side. So these three terms must add up to equal to 0. Well, we're thinking about what number can we replace into here and replace into here, add those up plus the 36 and get 0. I have no idea. This is definitely not something you want to use guess and check on. There must be a more precise, simple method. The problem really is that we have both an a squared term and an a to the first power. If we just had a by itself, we'd be a lot better off. The way we can do that is through factoring. Of course, the first thing we want to look at is, is there a common term between these three that we can factor out right away? Well, it turns out there is not. So we're going to break it up into the product of two binomials. Therefore, we're thinking about what numbers multiply to give us 36 and add to give us 13. Perhaps it's easier to look at the factors of 36. 36, of course, would be 36 times 1, but 36 and 1, there's no way we're going to get 13. What about 18 times 2? That gives us 36, but can you add 18 and 2 to get 13? Nope. 6 times 6 also gives us 36, but the 6 and 6 add up to give us 13? Close, but that only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. That's 12. We want 13. Well, what about 9 times 4? 9 times 4 gives us 36, and 9 plus 4 is 13. That's the solution here. So we're going to work with using 9 and 4. Breaking this thing up into two binomials, we have a plus 9 times a quantity of a plus 4. Notice that our 36 was positive, and our middle term here was positive. The only way that you can multiply and get positive, and add and get positive, is if both terms, both pieces are positive. Both binomials are positive. Now, there's something in algebra here called the zero product property. The zero product property says that when you have the product of two factors here and they yield zero, well, either this thing times this has to give us zero or this times zero gives us zero. So either the a plus nine factor has to become zero or the a plus 4 factor has to become 0. Therefore, we're going to look at two situations, the a plus 9 equaling 0 or the a plus 4 equaling 0. Therefore, we're going to look at the two situations here. First, let's look at a plus 9 equals 0. If a plus 9 equals 0, what's a? Subtract 9 on both sides, and you end up with a equals negative 9. That's one of your solutions, but there's the other. Consider when a plus 4 equals 0. If a plus 4 equals 0, what is a? Subtract 4 on both sides, and you end up with a equals negative 4. So there you have it. Your solutions are negative 9 and negative 4. Here they are written as a set. Negative 9 comma negative 4. If you replace either of those two numbers into a, you will get 0 equals 0, making it a true statement. This is part one. Please stay tuned for part two of the Factoring to Solve Equations tutorial.